In a world where magic reigns supreme, the Clover Kingdom holds a rich history of mages and wizards. Legends speak of a great demon defeated by the kingdom's first wizard king. Our story begins as we enter the lives of two orphan babies, Asta and Yuno, who were raised by a church on the outskirts of the Clover Kingdom. Fifteen years later, the boys Asta and Yuno have grown up as brothers, sharing a bond forged in the small village. In this magical realm, every person possesses the ability to perform magic thanks to their grimoires, personal spellbooks that unlock their potential. Yuno, a quiet and reserved boy, displays exceptional talent in wind magic, while Asta, out of pocket and competitive, has yet to manifest any magical abilities. Both Asta and Yuno share a common dream, to become the next Wizard King, the most esteemed mage in the Clover Kingdom. Asta, despite his lack of magical prowess, has dedicated himself to physical training, hoping to compensate for his magical shortcomings with sheer determination and strength. Asta and Yuno attend the highly anticipated Grimoire Acceptance Ceremony, where young mages receive grimoires suited to their abilities. Each grimoire bears a symbol of a three-leaf clover, representing integrity, hope, and love. However, the nobles, who hold disdain for commoners, become enraged when Yuno receives an exceptionally rare four-leaf clover grimoire, symbolizing luck. In a heartbreaking moment for Asta, he's left empty-handed, not receiving a grimoire. The humiliation weighs heavily on him, but his indomitable spirit remains unbroken. Meanwhile, Yuno becomes the target of two newly grimoired mages, but are quickly dispersed by a disgraced ex-magic knight determined to steal his coveted four-leaf clover grimoire. In the distance, Asa's spidey senses tingle, and he rushes to Yuno. Despite his lack of magical ability, Asta steps forward to protect his rival and confronts the thief. However, he is met with a harsh reality as the thief easily overpowers him, mocking his weakness. On the brink of despair, Yuno recognizes Asta as his rival, which ignites Asta's determination as he summons a black grimoire with an ominous five-leaf clover, a symbol that supposedly represents the devil. Yuno reflects on his childhood, where Asta, despite lacking magical powers, always looked after him. Asta's relentless pursuit of Sister Lily's affection, even as a child, continues, with him persistently trying to convince her to marry him. However, his advances are repeatedly rejected. Sister Lily inspires the boys with the tales of the first Wizard King, a legendary figure who saved humanity. Asta, driven by his unwavering determination, declares his ambition to become the Wizard King himself, despite his lack of magical abilities. Yuno is then entrusted with an important task of delivering a letter to the chief of the next village. However, on his way home, he is attacked and beaten by a thief who steals the necklace Yuno was found holding as a baby. Overwhelmed by fear, Yuno feels helpless and unable to fight back with his magic. Seeing Yuno in distress, Asta leaps into action, attacking the thief with his bare hands. Despite sustaining numerous injuries, Asta's relentlessness allows him to retrieve the stolen necklace, leaving the thief who steals from little boys bored and defeated. Witnessing Asta's bravery and unwavering spirit, Yuno decides to shed his fear and become as courageous as his friend. He declares himself Asta's rival and vows to become the Wizard King before Asta does igniting a friendly rivalry between them. In the present, Asta utilizes his Black Grimoire's powers to summon a ridiculously massive black sword. With this formidable weapon, he easily cuts through the thief's magic and defeats him with a single overpowering slash, showcasing his absurd physical strength. Asta and Yuno, standing victorious under a romantic sunset, reaffirm their promise to remain friendly rivals on their shared journey to become the Wizard King. As the days pass, the Magic Knight selection exam is on the horizon, where Asta and Yuno look to secure a coveted place in one of the nine Magic Knight squads. These squads, under the command of the current Wizard King, protect the Clover Kingdom. Asta and Yuno's competitive spirits reach new heights as they push each other to the limit. While Asta completes over 500 slashes to an absurdly large tree, Yuno refines his wind magic in the forest, and Father continues to subtly disrespect Asta four times in one minute in front of the village's head mage. As Asta trains, Nash, one of the orphans, shares his doubts with Asta. He believes the dreams of commoners and orphans can't come true, but Asta yells through Nash's soul that possibilities exist in everyone, and reaffirms that he will become the Wizard King. At a heartfelt going away party thrown by Father Orsi and Sister Lily, Yuno receives praise and congratulations for his expected success in the Magic Knight selection. Meanwhile, Asta is reminded by Father, another three more times, that nobody expects him to pass, and if he fails, he can always return home. Asta tells Father he should say the same thing to Yuno, and that he'll be fine since he is going to become the Wizard King and marry Sister Lily, who once again 
flat out rejects him. As the boys set off on their journey to the capital city, Sister Lily reflects on the past and how much Asta and Yuno have grown. The journey to the capital city is filled with training, different terrains, and fantasies of Sister Lily. After days of arduous travel, Asta and Yuno finally reach the capital city. Excitement fills the air as they prepare to face the Magic Knight exam, a pivotal moment in their lives. Filled with determination, Asta and Yuno arrive at the exam registration. Yuno receives admiration for his rare four-leaf grimoire, while Asta barely gets in. The exam hall is teeming with peculiar creatures called anti-birds, whose attraction is inversely proportional to the magical abilities of individuals. Yuno remains completely ignored, while Asta finds himself bombarded by a swarm of anti-birds, and slams into a large-necked magic knight. Asta can't believe he's the same age as him, and reminds himself to not judge a book by its cover. He promptly puts his hand on his shoulder, and tells him he looks old, and must have had a hard life. To which the man says, Asta must be ready to die. Two magic knights ask the large man what he's doing, to which he replies that he was going to take a dump and end the boy's life. The crowd watches and realizes that man is Yami Sukahiro, the captain of the Black Bulls, the Magic Knight squad whose damages exceed the successes that they're credited for. As the opening ceremony is about to begin, Baja, I mean Seke Brunzaza, an arrogant candidate, introduces himself to Asta and tells him about the Magic Knight squad captains as they take their seats. William Vengeance, the captain of the Golden Dawn and closest to becoming the Wizard King, performs the introductions and Captain Yami arrives fashionably late from his dump. As the exam proceeds, Vengeance procures brooms for the candidates to test their magic control. Magic control is tested through various events, and Yuno astounds everyone with his exceptional skills, effortlessly outperforming every other candidate, while Asta miserably fails. The last event is a one-on-one -on -one duel, and Seke seeks to take advantage of Asta's vulnerability, looking to display his own skills while belittling Asta. Baja, I mean Seke, summons a magic shield, hoping to humiliate Asta as he struggles to break through. However, Asta, fueled by Seke's disrespect, summons his sword and effortlessly cuts through Seke's shield, rendering him unconscious. The crowd is shocked, and Captain Yami realizes that Asta has no magic, and uses his absurd physical strength to reach Seke. Despite Asta's resounding victory in his duel, he finds himself the target of mockery from fellow candidates. Meanwhile, the one-on-one -on -one duels continue, and Yuno encounters an arrogant noble candidate, Salim. With unwavering confidence in his own abilities, Salim intends to showcase his superiority over commoners. However, fate has other plans as Yuno effortlessly defeats Salim, leaving the crowd in awe. With the duels concluded, the time has come for the squad captains to make their selections. Hope and uncertainty fill the air as candidates await their fate. Some candidates fail to meet the expectations and are sent home, their dreams temporarily dashed. Astounding the crowd and breaking tradition, Yuno achieves a feat never before seen. All nine squad captains select him for their squads, an extraordinary honor. He defies expectations and joins the prestigious Golden Dawn, a squad typically reserved for royalty and nobility. Asa, on the other hand, faces a more challenging path. Rejection seems imminent until Yami Sukahiro, the enigmatic captain of the Black Bulls, steps forward, emitting his immense magic power. Asta refuses to be intimidated and stands by his word that he will become the Wizard King. Despite their reputation as the worst Magic Knight squad, Yami accepts Asta into their ranks, telling him he will put him through hell, but at the end, he will become the Wizard King. After the ceremony, as Asta takes a dump, Baja, I mean Seke, tries to poison him, but is stopped by Yuno, protecting his friend and rival. Asta exits the bathroom, and he and Yuno part ways. Yami scolds him for making him wait, but Asta backs himself up, saying his dump was massive. Yuno finds himself at the esteemed Golden Dawn headquarters, greeted by Klaus Lynette, a knight who harbors doubts about a commoner like Yuno deserving a place in their ranks. Yuno faces a cold reception, questioning his worthiness in the eyes of the prestigious Golden Dawn. Asta arrives at the Black Bull's hideout and is greeted by an explosion. He rushes into the hideout and sees chaos in the making. Two Black Bulls are engaged in a heated brawl, while other knights exhibit peculiar behaviors. Asta introduces himself to the squad, but they aren't listening at all. Amidst the turmoil, a commanding presence enters the scene, Yami Sukahiro, the captain of the Black Bulls. He as Finral introduce the Black Bulls, the non-talking but actually talking Gordon Agrippa, the drunk and flirty Vanessa, battle-hungry Luck, the sister-loving Gouch, the bottomless pit Charmy, Four Eyes Magna, himself, the worst playboy Finral, Grey, and finally, the captain of the Black Bulls, Yami Sukahiro. As Asta grapples with his newly accepted position in the Black Bulls, 
Magna reveals that he has yet to earn his robe, a symbol of his official membership. Magna subjects Asta to a series of physically demanding tests, completing over 5,000 push-ups and sit-ups, smashing his head into a boulder, and the final test in facing Magna. Magna fires a massive fireball at the new Black Bull, and Asta's instincts kick in as he strikes the fireball with the flat of his sword, preventing it from exploding and returning it to Magna, who narrowly escapes being engulfed by his own spell. With his impressive display of skill, Asta earns the admiration and respect of Magna Swing and the entire Black Bull squad. The Black Bulls embrace Asta wholeheartedly, warmly welcoming him into their ranks. Asta receives his own robe, adorned with the emblem of the Black Bulls, a symbol of his newfound belonging. Throughout the initiation, Asta remains unaware of an observant anti-bird that has been following him, as well as a mysterious young lady who is the second new recruit of the Black Bulls. After their acceptance into the ranks of the Magic Knights, Asta and Yuno take a moment to write letters to the orphanage they grew up in. The orphanage is both surprised, especially father, and proud to learn that Asta has become a Magic Knight alongside Yuno. As Magna shows Asta around the hideout and interrupts Yami taking a dump, Asta encounters the other new recruit. Enter Noelle Silva, the youngest daughter of the prestigious Silva royal family and sister to the Silver Eagles captain. Immediately, Noelle labels Asta as a little insect commoner, displaying her ingrained prejudice. Asta refuses to back down in the face of Noelle's condescending attitude, leading Noelle to unleash her water magic in an attempt to strike Asta. However, her spell completely misses its target and hits Magna instead. Frustration and anger consume Noelle as she storms off and finds herself unable to control magic. Painful memories resurface as she recalls her family, deeming her a disgrace and denying her entry into the Silver Eagles, the squad that has long been their family's legacy. Noelle's distress peaks when she realizes Asta witnessed her struggle with magic control. Overwhelmed by emotions, she unintentionally traps herself in a massive water bubble, drowning within its confines. Enter the wise and unpredictable captain of the Black Bulls, Yami, with his unorthodox approach, solves the problem by throwing Asta at the water bubble. Asta's sword swiftly cuts through the spell, nullifying it and saving Noelle from imminent danger. In a turning point for Noelle, she realizes that despite her lack of control over magic, Asta admires her power, and the Black Bulls accept her and her flaws unconditionally. Overwhelmed by this realization, Noelle rejoins the squad, shedding her disdainful label of insect for Asta and addressing him by his real name. On the verge of tears, Asta extends his hand to Noelle and she accepts. As the newest recruit of the Black Bulls, Asta finds himself burdened with all sorts of household chores, from cleaning to laundry, and even the daunting task of waking up the eccentric Captain Yami every morning. Asta's days are filled with menial tasks. On the other hand, Noelle, despite being the same rank as Asta, seems to be exempt from any responsibilities. Asta begins to realize that he has no idea what being a magic knight truly entails. The explanations provided by the Black Bulls prove to be rather unhelpful, leaving Asta in a state of confusion and curiosity. Captain Yami, accompanied by Magna, embarks on a seemingly dangerous mission, only to discover that their mission involves none other than gambling. They engage in a high-stakes poker game, where luck proves to be against them. In a series of unfortunate events, they end up losing everything, including their underwear, to the chief of Sousi Village. In an attempt to settle their debt, Yami assigns the task of dealing with a pack of giant fire-shooting boars to Asta, Magna, and Noel. It's an opportunity for them to gain valuable experience, though it's evident that Yami may have simply passed the task to them to avoid doing it himself. As Magna takes Asta and Noel to Sousi Village, utilizing his modified flying broomstick, Crazy Cyclone, a group of malevolent mages led by the rogue ice mage, Heath Grice, make their ominous entrance at Sousi Village. Grice and his group of mages infiltrate Sousi Village in search of a mysterious magical stone. Their arrival creates a sense of unease as they pose a threat to the village and its inhabitants. After Asa successfully eliminates the troublesome fire shooting boars, he and his companions make their way to Sousi Village. Along the way, Magna shares his past as a troublemaker and how the Sousi chief, through defeating him, convinced him to join the ranks of the Magic Knights. Upon reaching Sousi Village, they encounter an eerie mist barrier that surrounds the village, hindering their progress. Utilizing his anti-magic sword, which, as you guessed it, nullifies any form of magic, Asta disperses the mist, revealing the path forward and the villagers. As they approach the townsfolk, Grice attempts to execute them. Magna valiantly defends the villagers, but unfortunately, 
their beloved chief and Magna's mentor, has already fallen victim to Grice's malevolence. Grice launches a massive ice ball, attempting to crush the group, but Asta swiftly slices it in half, displaying his impressive swordsmanship. Asta reflects on Sister Lily's words as he sees the prejudice against those who have little magic and unabashedly says he will protect those who he considers meaningless. However, Grice continues his assault, looking down on peasants with little magic and unleashing a barrage of spikes from every direction. In the midst of the chaos, Noelle, despite her previous struggles, summons the courage to attack Grice. Although her aim falters, Asta and Magna step in to protect her. Overwhelmed by shame and fear, Noelle considers abandoning the villagers to their fate. However, a terrified young girl's plea for help stirs something within Noelle. In a moment of realization, her instinct to protect others unlocks a powerful spell in her grimoire. She conjures a massive water shield that shields the villagers from Grice's icy onslaught. With the villagers protected, Asta charges towards Grice with all his might, determined to take down his adversary. He nails Grice in the ribs, but Asta finds himself on the receiving end of a massive ice pillar, enduring wounds in the process, but continues to attack. Asta realizes he wants to be the Wizard King not only because of his rivalry with Yuno, but to protect those who need protecting. Magna, witnessing Asta's struggle and reflecting on the pride his village held when he became a magic knight, summons the last reserves of his magic. With great determination, he launches fireballs at Grice and his mages, their flames flickering with his unwavering resolve. While Grice manages to block most of the fireballs, a few manage to slip past his defense. Asta, recalling the move that earned him his Black Bull's robe, strikes the reflected fireballs with the flat of his sword. The redirected projectiles catch Grice and his mages off guard defeating them in a fiery spectacle, and Asta finishes off Grice with a final sword swing to the head, much like my grandma hitting me in the head with a sandal growing up. However, one mage manages to escape their fate. Exhausted from the battle, Asta succumbs to sleep, his body weary from the intense confrontation, and Noelle blushes as she silently admits to herself that Asta is incredible. The bonds between them begin to deepen amidst the chaos and triumph. Meanwhile, the anti-bird, hidden within Asta's robe all along, uncovers the stone that Grice had been searching for. It decides to make Asta's head its permanent perch, keeping the stone safe in its newfound sanctuary. Bound in chains, Grice chooses to take his own life, along with his remaining mages, to avoid interrogation and ensure the secrecy of their mission. Unbeknownst to them, their actions set the stage for a looming threat and an impending resurrection. Upon saving the village, the trio returns to the Black Bull's secret hideout. The Wizard King acknowledges the Black Bull's heroic actions in saving Saucy Village by presenting them with a star. Stars serve as symbols of achievements in service to the Clover Kingdom, and magic squads compete to earn them. With this newly earned star, the Black Bulls finally have a nice even negative 30 stars, while the Golden Dawn stands as the reigning champions with 70 stars. Asta receives his monthly earnings of 200,000 Yule, the currency of the Clover Kingdom. To Asta, this is a vast sum while Noel dismissively refers to it as pocket money. Asta, displaying his selflessness, sends most of his money back to the orphanage, supporting those who had once cared for him. Afterward, Vanessa and Oteca, a beautiful and enigmatic member of the Black Bulls, takes Noel and Asta shopping, more specifically to the Black Market, despite Noel's initial discomfort with the criminal atmosphere. Noel hopes to find items that may aid her in controlling her magic and overcoming her struggles. Baja, I mean Seke, who now performs minor tasks for the Green Mantises, attempts to flirt with Noel and Vanessa. However, he grows irritated when he realizes the two beautiful ladies are accompanying Asta. Asta greets him as Baja, and even gets him to say his name is Baja. Poor Baja. Amidst the bustling streets, a thief seizes an elderly woman's bag. As Asta and Seke chase after the thief, the culprit attempts to flee on a magical cloud. Ever determined, Asta chases down the thief with his unnatural speed and throws his sword with precision, nullifying the thief's magic and foiling the escape. Seke eagerly tackles the thief, seeking credit for the capture, but he finds himself unexpectedly stabbed in the foot by a poisoned dagger and thinks he's dying. However, embarrassingly, Vanessa reveals that the poison is merely a skin irritant and that he is in fact not going to die. While Seke escorts the thief to the authorities, Asta returns the stolen property to the woman, once the three leave, she reveals her true identity as Julius Novacrono, the current Wizard King. As a passionate magic enthusiast, Julius is immediately intrigued by Asta's unparalleled anti-magic abilities, setting the stage for a captivating interaction between the young protagonist and the esteemed leader. 
Meanwhile, Nuno embarks on his first mission alongside Klaus and Mimosa Vermilion, another member of royalty like Noel. Their task is to provide security for Salim, the noble candidate whom Yuno defeated during the exam. Klaus, harboring suspicions about Salim's motives, questions his request for Yuno's presence, given his previous rejection from the magic squads. During their journey, Yuno, Klaus, and Mimosa find themselves under attack by a group of bandits. In the face of danger, Salim proposes that they seek refuge in nearby Hajj village, coincidentally Yuno's hometown. The group agrees, and upon their arrival, Yuno is welcomed with heartfelt enthusiasm by the villagers. Salim hits on Sister Lily and is promptly rejected, Asta style, and suspiciously insists that they stay a while. Father overexcitedly decides that they will have a Tato feast. Within the church, under the watchful gaze of a giant demon skull, the group feasts on the extremely dry Tatos, with Salim happily noting he's never had something that's made him so thirsty. The gracious Sister Lily goes to fetch more water, and finds herself captured by bandits. Yuno disobeys Klaus's orders and confronts the bandits, realizing that the bandits' true target was him, not Salim. He easily disposes of the bandits and confronts the leader, who demands his coveted four-leaf grimoire. However, before Sister Lily can be harmed, Klaus and Mimosa stage a strategic ambush, swiftly defeating the bandits. In the aftermath, Klaus reveals that Mimosa used her plant creation magic to extract information from Selim, unveiling his true motives. Selim, consumed by revenge for his defeat at Yuno's hands during the exam, had hired the bandits to steal the grimoire. As the truth unfolds, an unintentional slip from Klaus reveals his respect for Yuno's remarkable abilities. Yuno offers to spare Selim's life on the condition that he stays away from Haj village, hoping to end the cycle of vengeance. However, Salim refuses to accept it, and he attempts a deadly attack on Yuno, and surprisingly, Sister Lily intervenes and swiftly incapacitates Salim. As the dust settles, it is revealed that one of the bandits was none other than Julius, the Wizard King himself, who had taken the bandit's place to observe Yuno's capabilities. After Salim's revelation, the Wizard King learns of his corrupt father, a high-ranking politician, and rewards the Golden Dawn with a star for exposing him. Klaus, however, suspects that their leader, William Vengeance may have known about Salim's father all along. Asa discovers that Yuno has also earned a star in his first mission, igniting yet another fire under him to catch up to the Golden Dawn. With an anomaly appearing, the Wizard King auspiciously says to send them for this next mission. And that brings us to the end of this anime arc. We hope you enjoyed, and remember to like this video, subscribe to Panorama Anime, and leave a comment for the dungeon arc.